Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void in a Patreon cast. Today, it's going to be between Bjorn and Zest here on Ber Berlingrad. Blah, stumbled over it because it's a Team Liquid map contest map, not an official ladder map yet. Bottom right, we have Zest, and in the top left we have Bjorn. This is from Home Story Cup. They sprinkled in a few TLMC maps just to mix it up a bit. Home Story Cup is a fun tournament if you ever uh, have the chance to tune in. It's held two or three times a year, and it just wrapped up. So, hello, Mr. Doggy. How are we doing? <laughs> they have dogs in the Comprulu sector. All right, man. So, this is Berlingrad. Uh, let's see here. Any high, high income uh, mineral patches? Nope. Hmm. And no Zelnaga watchtowers as well. Just a lot of destructible debris. And a super, super wide opening to wall off your natural. Alright, man. Pro Parasin Zest. Beyond says, hey! You leave my SCV alone in a battle that has been going on for many, many years in StarCraft. This is just the continuation of it. Blocking off the Reaper hop-up spot if there's gonna be one. Doom, doom, doom. Hmm, so double gas. Before, okay. So this is not a Reaper expand build. Maybe it's a super fast Widowmine drop. That's what I'm feeling it is. Maybe it's gonna be for a Cyclone to defend against you know, a Void Ray or an Oracle coming into his base very early. Or uh, Void Rays are repulsed by Oracles because they're faster than Oracles. And they hit a little bit harder. And yeah, Cyclones are a good way to keep stuff out of your base in the early game. <laughs> so yeah, definitely not a Reaper. I mean, a Reaper in TVP is really falling out of favor. And I mean, at this point... Is that a starport? Yeah. At this point, Bjorn doesn't do him much either, so kind of surprising. Not surprising, rather, that we don't have one of those. It's a Twilight Council opening from Zest. Hmm. So not going for an Oracle, not going for a Void Ray at all. Intriguingly, this is an interesting opening here. PvP can often be very short. It can definitely turn into a situation where the first push just kind of wins the game, or the first push weakens the opponent to the fact that the second push... Uh, to the point that the second bush is very, very strong and wins the game at that. So, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, that's a medevac. We're making... Oh, Hellion drops? Maybe some kind of weird Hellbat attack? I don't... Oh, this is intriguing. Yeah, Zess is like, why haven't you expanded? I've expanded. I've got 28 probes already. What's your problem here, Bjorn? The question is, well, it's going to be Hellions. And it's going to be a medevac, and it's going to be building an expansion on the low ground at three minutes. So, hmm. Interesting. I don't know what this is intended to do, really. I mean, look at this. I guess maybe the point is that it's hard to wall this off, like we talked about. Like, we've got a robo facility and a gateway in here, and they're a probe. And I don't, still am not sure we're hard, wall, hard walled here, but I guess we are. Zest wouldn't leave it like this unless it was hard walled. Probe checking to see where the enemy is. Can't really see any sign of it. So, oh, the medevac's a fake out. So the medevac forces a warp in over here, forces the soccer to come over, and then the Hellions try to dart in the front, but look who hard walled, like an absolute boss. Zest, he was prepared for this. He was ready for that. He responded to the fake out because he knew the Hellions couldn't get through here anyway. There was no need to leave anybody back here. Ah, oh, the hard wall is hot. Okay, but now, well, I mean, if we're trying it now, seems like a difficult play. Uh, yeah, alright, so we're gonna unload here, and the Hellions are gonna try to kill as many probes as possible, so two, these are YOLO Hellions, if ever I've seen them, they are not getting out. Five, seven probes is good, Medivac is still alive, no, never mind, it's down nine probes, maybe, can we get ten, lucky number ten, quite possibly, juking around with the Hellion, expanding back home, getting a Raven, okay, Hellion goes down, nine probes it is. So it's 30 to 32 workers. That still has a lead because he's got two bases. And Bjorn are just barely, just barely got his second base up. He's Maynard transferring a few SCVs down here now. Stalkers are up. Do we have Blink? Yes, Blink just completed. We saw that on the right side. Thank you to the Game Heart interface. We're going to Blink down and start on our journey across the map to see what we can do to take down Bjorn. So Blink Stalkers in the hands of Zest can be very scary. 
Any elite Protoss player, from parting to stats to zest to trap, Blink Stalkers are going to be very dangerous versus the Terrans these days, and have been for some time. So let's see what we get. Going to run past this bunker, hit it, poke it a little bit, go after some SCVs, but Siege Tank in a good position up here with, okay, some Marines, good number of Marines, and a Raven for anti-armor missile if you want to blink on top of that. The Stalkers are like, yeah. I don't know about this. Is there a Warp Prism? Yes, there's a Warp Prism. Is it moving out? Yeah, no, that's an Observer. Warp Prism here. Okay, so now you have to defend your main base, and you have to defend... Okay, so blinking on top of the... Mm, they get the bunker. Which, at this point, there's enough Marines, and there's enough of tank here. All right, so tank setting up, resetting up here. This is some pretty strong two-base aggression out of Zest. Took some economic damage, not really enough to concern him too much, but... We'll see how this one goes. Adept shades up into the main and does actually. It's like, hey, come on in here. We'll kill you. That's fine. Oh, it does actually come in. And then blinking up. Tank down. Tank down. Another tank on the high ground. Marines. Pretty good in this situation. And pulling some SCVs to try to deal with it too. Maybe the SCVs need to go back to work. Tank re-sieges up. Starts to get a hit off there. Beautiful hit on those stalkers. Back home, it's nothing, man. It is a couple more probes. It is warping in four more stalkers. Zest is trying to kill Beyond it now. And my god, oh, he might get it. By golly, indeed. Another tank to replace the one that died. Tank production is continuous right now, but only one at a time. He doesn't have multiple facts to work with. He is working on another barracks from Marauders to deal with these stalkers. Five, five SEVs go down. Tank focus fired. Ugh, this war prism staying alive is a big time hassle for Beyond. These SCVs are just dying by the dozens. I mean, SCVs are pretty good fighters. Another big warping against stalkers. Against stalkers, that is. Another tank sets up. This tank, I mean, you're the, lo the, the, the most recent in a long line. And this is not a YOLO stalker play. You may think it is, but these guys are fully planning on getting out of here. Oh my gosh, if they cancel still, they cancel stim. Oh, they deny stim. They get rid of the tech lab on the barracks, too. You can't make any marauders here. This is just brutal from Zest. He looking so, so good. Tank pops out, immediately dies. Other tank trying to do what he can. So many SCVs have died. But keep in mind, Terran can afford to lose some SCVs in, the, in a game like this. Get inside the bunker. I'm not even sure if that's going to be enough. But, I mean, it's better than fighting outside the bunker if you're these Marines, right? So, sure, pop some in. 21 SCVs have gone down to the nine probes. It's 31 to 21 workers right now. Zest is not getting a third. Zest wants to win this thing now. He's throwing down four more Stargate or Warp Gates, rather. Getting an Immortal to more easily deal with these tanks. 23 SCVs. This is just staying up forever and ever. Second Refinery dies here at the natural base for Bjorn. He's just getting absolutely pushed right now. Army value is 45 to 26. Like I said, Blink Stalkers can be extremely strong against Terran in the hands of an elite Protoss. Maybe not in your hands, because you're not an elite Protoss, but somebody like Zest. Yeah, he's very comfortable with it. He knows how to do it in a way where he never loses all of his stalkers. It's just they don't have to engage with anything. Man, they lost another tech lab. Second one trying to come up here on that barracks. Another one coming up on this barracks. Okay, so just kind of blinking a few stalkers in. Reactor on the starport does get saved. Okay, so some small, tiny little victories coming in here from Bion. His production hub is very busy. A lot of add-ons on there. And I'm just I'm looking at Zest and I'm waiting for him to maybe like take a third Nexus, but he's not interested. He's just not is not happening. <laughs> Alright, man. Stim is getting restarted. Plus one uh, armor's on the way here too. Observer sniped. And Zest pulling back a little bit to reconsolidate his forces. He's already uh, doesn't actually have any other upgrades other than Blink working on plus one attack. We're working on charge for the Zealots, and there's your third base warp in from Zest. He says, okay, I've done enough damage to Beyond here where if I get a third base, I'll be ahead. And he is. He's up in worker count. He's up in, well, actually tied on worker count, which means the income is better for Beyond because mules are good. Warping in some stalkers up here in the main base. Shouldn't be too much to deal with. Thinks about going in. Doesn't actually go in. I mean, the thing about warp prisms is they represent potential future warp ins as well. It's not just the warp prism. Third base from Bion coming up here, not too far behind where Zest's third is. Like I said, Terran players, they can survive. If a Zerg player took that much damage, I think they would just be dead. But Terrans can take a bunch of damage, 
can lose a bunch of workers and still fight and claw their way back to a victory. Yeah, I'm liking this from Bjorn. He's doing okay. What are we going to add on the splash damage is the question. Uh, Zest is not interested in splash damage today. He has, um, well, he's got a robo facility, but he doesn't have a robotics bay, so no Colossus available. And no disruptors available either, but there's your robotics bay. All right, so just now coming in inside the natural base. We also don't have a Temple Archives for Storm. But, man, this army value is really problematic right now. I mean, we're looking combat shields coming in. Uh, plus one infantry armor might be finished in time for this battle. It's going to be super close. All right, so four tanks sieging up is actually a pretty scary tank army. In all reality here, did you think about poking into the main base with this little drop? He thought about it, but there were some stalkers at home to deal with that. And you can warp in stalkers to defend if you need to anyway. So Robotics Bay on the way here. Third base timing. Going to upgrade the command center to an orbital and then land it here for that third base, which the Phoenix says no third base yet. That's good news for me. My third base is up and oversaturated and soon to be perfectly saturated as the simulator comes in on the right side. Remember to hit that like button. Also, if you feel like supporting the channel, you can click that join button down below. Become a member of the Falcon Paladin channel. Uh, it gives you access to new emojis. It lets people know that you're a member. I mean, for as little as a couple bucks a month, you can do that. And if you're watching this on Patreon, the week of, I guess, November the 10th or 11th around there, thank you so much for supporting me at patreon.com for slash Falcon Paladin for at least $1 a month. If you're watching this in the month of December, well, happy holidays, and uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. Hallucinated Colossus here. And the big old uh, zealot warping into the natural base doesn't seem to do a whole lot. Force field's good unit. I love the Hallucinated Colossus play. And actually depowering this warp gate and this Twilight Council and the Cybernetics Core is kind of cool. Ooh, getting rid of the Cyber Core is nice, too. No... Interesting. So no further robotics facilities can be built. No further stargates can be built until that is back. A new one has been replanted. So I don't know, man. Beyond's up 157 to 148 supply. His army is bigger. He's got the Marines. He's got the Marauders. He's got 1-1 one, one on those dudes, which is a great feeling to have. Against the Protoss. What are we thinking about? Another Zealot drop in the natural. What else is happening? Uh, hmm, 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 hmm. Turtles came out. Oh, this is one of those things where I talk about pop culture. And the people who watch this that are patrons will be more familiar with it because it's newer. And the people that watch it in December are like, eh. So, Eternals. I'm actually curious. If you're watching this in December, what's the reception of Eternals? Because I think the critics have gotten a hold of it. And they give it about a 50% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, which really sucks. But the fans haven't watched it yet. I think it just comes out today as the time that I'm casting this. So, if Eternals is a big deal, let me know in the comments. I'm curious. But as of now, it seems to be a little bit... Like, you introduce 10 new characters, more than that, which is hard to pull off. And a couple twists that just don't really work. And it's a lot of flashbacks. And people just... The critics don't seem to enjoy it. Anyway. Low ground siege tanks. Ah, uh, here. That Marauder count is fairly heavy. That is a beefy boy army of Marauders. 24 Marauders and 45 Marines. I mean, I'm telling you, this is... Oh, big hit, though. Ugh! Okay. All right. Disruptor hits. Big freaking deal. He wants to kill that disruptor so bad, but another one comes in. Chases him out. Big old Zealot warping at the third base of Beyond Woods here to defend this. Well, actually, a pretty big army of Marines and Marauders, to tell you the absolute truth. But so many SCVs are dying. No! Disruptor doesn't hit because they killed the disruptor. Okay, really good micro there from Beyond. Natural base still on fire. Those Zealots are just so hard to deal with if they have the upgrades, which they do. They've got the charge. No armor upgrades, though, which makes it even harder to deal with incredibly. This warp gate's gonna die. No disruptors here at all. Oh, never mind. There's two back here. Ugh. So he picks up. Siege tanks. He has to unload into a super heavy combat zone. I don't know about this. Three Colossus is pretty strong. The tanks are trying to fire, but Zealots are all over them as well. Disruptors taking out the final tank. A little bit unnecessary there, but it's 73 to 48 army supply. Byun has a giant army supply. Some of those are medevacs. A lot of those are medevacs, but that's 14 marauders and 20 marines. There are still four disruptors in this army, though. The Colossus doing work. Four kills each. Disruptors not doing any kills. Uh, any uh, kills. Yeah, I guess one on these. Not a huge deal. Wow. So Byun does have mules. He is at 44 workers, which is fine. His army value is big. And I like this. Coming down from multiple directions against the Protoss. Yeah, trying to stem in here and come from the ramp. Come from the right side. 
takes down a Disruptor before it can fire. Another Disruptor comes in and actually kills a DT that was part of Zest's composition. Man, those Disruptors, they do the friendly fire. They could be very dangerous for you sometimes. This is a very good game. Ghost Academy is done. Going to start getting some Ghosts. Some uh, enhanced shockwave upgrade to increase the EMP radius against these Protoss units. Yeah, there we go. Ghost production there. Plus three attack on the way. More DTs coming in here too. And a fourth base on the way from Zest. So yeah, this is just the cockroach style of Terran, man. He's killed 43 SCVs today, Zest has. And guess what? Beyond's not dead. He's fine. His army value is big. His worker count's not that high. But he's got mules because he, he has multiple orbitals here. And the income tab is favoring Beyond right now. Maybe you just toss down some mules, but it's incredibly good. I'm going to try to take this uh, top uh, 12 o'clock base. There's a DT here, though, trying to deny that from Bjorn, and he spotted it. He saw the little, the discoloration, the, the waviness. I don't know. However you see DTs when they're not actually revealed. So this group dies. That, was, that probe was bait. <laughs> Ow, that hurt a lot. And then the push up, this might, this is going to be a problem. Marauders against Disruptors are good, man. Tries to split them out. One Disruptor goes down. A couple uh, Marauders go down, too. All right, holding. Marauder count is actually heavy and scary. They are not working on 2-2 upgrades, which I'm a little bit concerned about. 2-2 upgrades is pretty good if you're going for a lot of Marauders. And the Marines, beyond man, playing so well. This 12 o'clock is saturated. I mean, sure, Zest has a fourth base too, but Beyond's at 144 supply, Zest at 147. Tech, about 3,000 for each. That's upgrades and that is static defense. This fourth base for Beyond is not a planetary, which you'll notice. What is killing? Ah. Are DTs just kind of wandering in here and killing SCVs? Or maybe Zealots are tracking in there too. I don't know what we're looking at. Uh, this 12 o'clock is entirely undefended. All right, suddenly we're on base trade scenario. Denies ground armor level one, takes down robotics facility, but Beyond's fourth base is completely toast as well. He's not going to be able to save that orbital, but what is home here to defend? DTs are here. Scan, scan, scan. There's the scan. Ah, oh, man. DTs are such a hit or miss unit in this situation. Forces the recall home. Okay, so we traded the natural base and some tech. Dude, getting that robotics bay would be amazing. And I think he's going to try to save it. No, 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 not going to save it, though. Robotics Bay goes down. That's a big deal for Beyond. Tanks are setting up. DT is wandering into the mix. And actually, Marauders on the right side are kind of the last hope right now. They take down Colossus. They take down the Disruptor. They take down another Colossus. DT is getting some big hits off here. But these Marauders just dancing beautifully. Beyond finally getting wiped out. But so much damage. Beyond is in with reinforcements. Immortal gets picked up, but gets saved. Another scan. More DTs dying. Are they paying for themselves? I'm not sure that they are. Bion doesn't have a huge army here. Oh, shield battery overture is canceled by taking down the, the shield battery very, very quickly. Army value 75 to 21. I think Bion is actually going to win this game after the, all the damage he took from the Blink Stalker attack and from the later further attack on his worker count. Zest trying to get some Stalker stuff done on the other side. Can he do it? The Marauders getting some huge damage off. Trying to do some medevac <laughs> juggling. The third base for Bion is dead. That's his last source of income. Does Bion know about this? He does oh, not know about this, he's but he's assuming it's there. He's going to head up and kill that one and try to rely on his reinforcements coming out because he has a production tab right now, and Zest doesn't. Nexus down. Zest trying to hold on. Bion, man. Sometimes Bion. He's not exactly winning premier tournaments right now, but he can take maps off of anybody right now. And GG Bion takes down Zest in 18 and a half minutes. An absolutely stupidly impressive TVP from him. I'm going to be honest. I clicked on this assuming it would be a Zest win. I was like, look, man, Bion is good, but Zest per PVT is amazing. And Bion is not quite the monster he used to be, but he is the monster he used to be sometimes. And that is one of these times. Holy smokes, hit that like button if you enjoyed that match. Zest, 30,000 resources lost to 24 from Bion. Look at this, 88 SCVs died today for Bion and 33 for Zest. And sometimes you'd say, well, sure, that was the end of the game. Bion lost all the SCVs at the third base. It didn't really matter, and that's true. But he lost a ton of SCVs during the Blink Stalker harass up here that was early that Zest really intended to kill Bion with. And then further attacks, just constantly taking out more SCVs all the time. And yet, the income tab, he's getting his spikes into his side of the map because of the mules. 
and because he was able to replace those SCVs so gosh darn quickly. Terrans are not dead until they are dead. Absolutely, insanely good game. Bion able to take down the natural base. Getting the robotics bay was a huge deal. Also killing some more tech structures in here. More production structures was good. Zess gets rid of Bion's newest source of income and then continues to come through this way. But Bion just has enough. The defender's advantage for him is enough to hold. And then Bion, his gut instinct tells him to check this for a base. There's one there. He wipes it out and that's how he gets the GG incredible just incredible macro there from beyond great micro he did take a couple disruptor hits that maybe were unnecessary but he is microing within just an inch of his life here well done just disgustingly great game there from beyond to take down zest i mean man i once again once again just a disgusting wonderful pvt I don't even know how else to tell you how good Beyond is here. Click on those Beyonds, man. Click on them. All right, so that is going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and a Patreon cast. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw, what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.